He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gadget Professor Show. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor. I am probably the only podcaster, probably in the United States, maybe the world, that is doing a show just for you on Christmas Day, December 25th, 2014. Welcome on board. Because it's Christmas, I am going to not do any hacking information. Nothing. We're going to get right into uh, some great apps. I have a a, uh, a good show for you with a lot of apps and an unusual uh, charger that uh, we'll take a look at. It's actually a, a solar charger, and uh, I have never tested one of these before until just now, and uh, you'll have to stay tuned and see what the Gadget Professor thinks about it. So if you're new to the Gadget Professor, welcome everyone. We put out a new show every Thursday evening. If you're old to the Gadget Professor, welcome back. You are part of 171 countries around the world that watch the Gadget Professor. Go figure. Uh, in terms of news, uh, we are gearing up and getting ready to go to the uh, Consumer Electronics Show 2015. That runs from, uh, I believe, January 6th through the 9th. Uh, yours truly will be there along with Wild Man Mike. I plan to do about between 40 and 50 interviews of people that I don't know. Uh, for the most part, there'll be uh, new technologies and new gadgets that are just being made available to the public at the Consumer Electronics Show, which, by the way, is the largest trade show in the world as far as I know. There is no larger trade show in terms of uh, uh, numbers of uh, exhibitors and also uh, people who attend. Uh, it is very difficult to find a room anywhere in Las Vegas right now and uh, uh, I am going to hold off telling you where I'm staying uh, until I get there because uh, let's put it this way, I hope the room is still there. All right, uh, let's get started right into it. Uh, I guess I've been receiving a couple emails that people have not been receiving the show notes, which is not good. Uh, I believe I have checked every link, and to the best of my knowledge, it is up and working, and there shouldn't be any problems. If you are not getting the show notes, please email me. And by the way, you could email me 24 hours a day, seven days a week at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. That would be thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. Email me if you're having problems getting the show notes. If you're new to the show, just basically scroll down to our, on our webpage, and uh, right here you'll see important pages newsletter just click on that and uh, that will bring you to the click to subscribe click to subscribe just put your email address in there and uh, every Thursday evening as soon as the show is posted you will receive the show notes and you want those because everything we talk about is uh, highlighted in the show notes with uh, a, a URL and it's hot link and you just click on it so you don't have to take notes okay uh, you can also visit us on Facebook. Uh, we have the Facebook page, which would be facebook.com forward slash The Gadget Professor. You can drop me a note there. You could watch the show from there if you want. Uh, if you want to watch the show, the easiest way is just go to the website and watch it. Certainly, uh, we're on iTunes. We have our own channel on the Roku box. So uh, it's easy to find The Gadget Professor. And last but not least, you want to check out our Rebel Mouse page. Our Rebel Mouse page takes all our tweets and makes a visualization out of them instantly. Uh, this is dynamic, so it's updated probably 10, 15 times uh, a day, probably actually more. It's probably more like 50 times a day. But if you want to follow us on Twitter, it would be at Gadget Professor, at Gadget Professor, and you want to check us out on Rebel Mouse, which is in the show notes. It's Rebel Mouse forward slash Gadget Professor, and you can literally see every gadget that's just being released by the hour. Uh, and this changes all day long. I go to this often to see what's out there. It's a, a really cool page. And uh, I definitely recommend it. All right, folks, what do we have for you? Well, if you have any money left, there's still some good sales out there because it's after Christmas. And uh, Fry Electronics has, I think, what I think is a great buy. And you can go to fries.com. Uh, this will be in the show notes. But they're offering a 3 terabyte Western Digital hard drive, which I think is one of the better hard drives out there. It's an internal hard drive retail kit. And uh, this regularly sells for $109, and they're selling it for $89, bucks, 
plus you get free shipping. That's a pretty good deal. A three terabyte drive for 89 bucks. Uh, if you're going to build your own server this year or your own iCloud, uh, this is a good drive to start off with if you're going to use a RAID configuration, which we've talked about many times. You may even want to buy two of them, so we shall see. Another decent buy that I found uh, uh, at Fry's, which I do think is a very good buy, actually. It's a Pony 64 gigabyte uh, th uh, USB 3 flash drive, and it's 64 gigabytes for 22 bucks. That's a pretty good buy, and uh, that will store a couple movies on you for sure, on there for sure. And then if you want to get the uh, a larger one, if you want to go to 128, this is 22 bucks. So if you doubled that, that would be 44 bucks. And you would get a 128, but you go to Tiger Direct, and for slightly less than double the price, you're getting double the uh, gigabytes. You're getting 128 gigs turbo uh, on a Pony, same brand, uh, again, 3.0. It's a very fast drive. Uh, it's gray and silver, but this is 40 bucks and including free shipping. So uh, they're both excellent buys if you need the larger drive. Uh, I would go with the 128. So uh, for 40 bucks, that's a pretty good price, and it's certainly a, a name brand. All right, uh, here is an app that uh, I just started using because, as as you know or may not know, uh, the Gadget Professor has always been using Android phones. Till now, I have just uh, just switched over to the uh, to the iPhone, and um, I I have to say I, I am liking it, but. Uh, Got to watch the battery on it. I, I use it a lot, and the battery has been holding up with no problem. I have to charge it certainly overnight, but for the most part, at the end of the day, and I pound on this, I'm left with about 15 to 20 percent battery power. And again, that's at the end of the evening. That's about 11 o'clock at night. So, in any event, uh, here is a a free app uh, designed to to keep your charging and your battery optimized if you will so this is a free app and uh, you can get it via itunes and what this is will do is it will monitor your battery status in real time and you can save your power by turning off apps you don't need with one click so this is what it looks like it, it says optimize power usage charging remaining time um, all those types of things are there and uh by constantly monitoring the battery, it will tell you when the optimal time it is to charge the battery. So uh, for free, it's it's really good, and uh, it will supposedly increase the overall long-term performance of your battery because you're monitoring it, knowing when to charge it, when not to charge it, how much time you have left, and it will hopefully prevent you from running out of juice at the end of the day. If you do run out of juice, that's where uh, this charger that we'll review today uh, will come into play, and uh, there's a couple things that I'll talk about that you want to know about chargers because there's a zillion of them on the market. When I go to CES, I would say there's no less than 100 to 200 companies that are just there selling chargers so uh, I can tell you a lot about those so let's move right on here here's a free app this is uh, for Windows only but uh, if you have a laptop and uh, you need a PDF reader and everybody needs a PDF reader yeah Adobe PDF reader is free but this is called PDF split and merge totally free meet ice cream split and merge this is a free application that does exactly what it says it's going to enable you to split and merge PDF files quickly and easily. You can split the documents into a single page, files, get rid of the specific pages, uh, and more using the various splitting modes that this tool offers. Merge or split any PDF file without quality limitations or quantity limitations, and even work with password protective files. Uh, this software also comes in with a built-in free PDF reader. So it does quite a few things. It's very robust. It's totally free. And I know that you will like this. No matter what PDF reader uh, you are using, you will you will enjoy this one. And again, it's uh, you can't beat the price because it is totally 100% free. All right. Speaking of free, uh, a lot of not a lot of people, but you know, every now and then I get a, an email telling me that uh, I spend a lot of time on free apps for the uh, iPhone platform, uh, the iOS platform. And I try to balance it out. As you know, I've been a, a Droid user for many, many years. But you may or may not know this, that if you go to, uh, to uh, Amazon, uh, they have uh, free apps daily 
uh, that you can download. And here's a free app of the day bundle. I will put this up. It may not be available to you depending upon when you watch the Gadget Professor show. That's why you should always watch it the first night it comes out, which is typically Thursday or Friday morning, because sometimes I find bargains or deals that are available only for 24 hours. But in any event, uh, here's like 20 different things that are available for free, all on the Android system. And uh, there's some cool games, some very cool uh, apps. I have several of them. This color, I can't control the phone. Uh, I'm in my my home uh, studio here. So let's uh, let's see if we can knock that off. I'm sure they'll call back, but in any event, this Color Splash is a really cool, uh, neat app. I've used it often, and uh, I really like it. It's actually available uh, for the iPhone, too. So, uh, ch not the iPhone, too, but the also the iPhone product. Again, I apologize about the phones. I have no control over that other than unplugging them, which that's a whole other story. All right. Crawling right along here. This is live. This is what happens when you do a live show. This is called No More Robo. I have covered this app once before a couple months ago. Uh, I got two requests for it uh, just this week, actually yesterday, uh, that I got two in the same day. But uh, people are getting robot calls on their f cell phones, and it's driving them insane. So other than enrolling on the No Call board, which you can just Google that, No Call. <coughs> Fighting a cold here, excuse me. Uh, other than enrolling in the No Call zone board, if you will, you can click on this and get this free app called No More Robo, and this essentially will stop your robo calls absolutely instantly. It's easy to use. It's a one-time setup that activates your No Robo on your current phone line, and uh, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, so on and so forth. That's a different call, and uh, again, I, I, I apologize, but... We'll, we'll get through this. So anyway, check out uh, the No Robo. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Here's another app that uh, I think you'll enjoy. And uh, this is primarily for the Android device. Uh, everybody knows that there's Find My Phone available for the uh, iPhone platform, but here's the Android device that will give you that same functionality. Uh, this app will help you find your misplaced or lost phone. The Android device manager locates lost devices and helps you keep your device, the data inside of it, safe and secure. And the Android device manager lets you locate Android devices associated with your Google account and it will reset your device's screen lock pin and erase all data on the phone. So, uh, if you have an Android phone, even if you have an iPhone, uh, you definitely want to have some software that allows you the ability to find it and to erase it because you don't want your phone compromised. Uh, by the way, on the new iPhone, everybody knows this, but you can actually use your thumbprint uh, as a security device to get in, or you have a, a code number, a PIN number that you could put in. I kind of like that feature. It's, it, it, it's, it's kind of neat. And here is a, a an app that I... I started using a while ago. I think uh, one of our listeners, one of my friends, uh, Warren Andrews, recommended this for me a long time ago, and I never really played with it till recently. It's called Mint, and uh, what this does is it helps you organize uh, automatically all the bills that you have. It takes a little while to set it up. It's totally safe. I've been using it now for three months, and wow, what a difference it's made in, uh, uh, for me in doing the bookkeeping. Uh, from money to budgeting to customized tips and more, you get a clean financial view of what you're spending and where your money's going and when bills are due. And uh, it's it's automated to the point where uh, uh, if you're traveling, uh, you can pay your bills and know what's due very easily. Uh, so you set up a basic account. It's uh, almost intuitive in terms of learning how to use it. It's very simple. But uh, I find this really good, and sometimes I just forget that there's a bill coming up. Uh, it helps you put things on auto pay. It helps you uh, pay a bill that you forgot about because if you set this up correctly, all that information comes into you. They have great charts and graphs, and uh, I think in general you'll really like this. It's free. It's secure. I do use it, and uh, I don't know how they give the service away for free. It's it's it's. Uh, uh, very robust and quite dramatic, and uh, it, for me, it's been very useful. So check that out. It's uh, mint, M-I-N-T, dot com. 
And now, last but not least, I'm not going to run this whole video. In fact, I'm probably not going to run any of it. But I am going to put this video up on the show notes. And uh, someone actually had sent this to me. And I'm a big Led Zeppelin fan, arguably one of the best bands ever, if not the best band. But that doesn't discount my love for the Rolling Stones. We'll talk about that some other time. However, uh, here's two guys. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they came from. Again, someone just sent me this video. But uh, this guy's a superb guitar player. But this gentleman here, uh, actually, uh, it's, it's mind-boggling. This guy, through his voice, plays the guitar and uh, the bass, the rhythm, and sings. And uh, this guy is incredibly talented. So uh, I'll let you watch this uh, at your leisure. And uh, if you're a Led Zeppelin fan, I think you'll like this. But... Uh, Man, this guy has a voice. It's like uh, I I've never seen or heard anything like it. It's very cool, so check that out. And now let's go to the gadget of the day. Uh, here it is. It's a, it's a charger, but it has a little different twist. It's a solar charger. Now, we've all seen the types of chargers that have a battery built inside of them, and uh, they come in all shapes and sizes, you know, this is one type of charger, the battery's built inside, as they all are, and you have a USB plug there, and you plug it in to the charger, and the other end goes into your phone, you'll have to have the proper configuration in terms of pins uh, for your smartphone, whatever type of phone that takes, whether it's an iPhone or a Droid, or whatever it is that you have, but the bottom line is, you charge this up, and uh, depending upon how many amps you have, and we'll talk about that in a minute, this will recharge your phone and or tablet. And when it's done, you might get two, three, four charges depending upon the amperage. Now, while we're talking about amperage, uh, essentially all these are rated in, in watts or, or amps for the chargers. And in my opinion, you really don't want to invest in any charger, whether it's a solar charger or a regular off-the-shelf charger. Uh, you don't want to invest in any charger unless it's a minimum, a minimum of 10,000 milliamps. And why do I say that? Well, if you buy one that's 5,000 or 4,000 or 3,000, it will work. But uh, this one happens to be 3,000, and I can charge my smartphone maybe two times on this. I say maybe because there's a lot of variables, how well this holds the charge, uh, how what condition the battery is in in your smartphone, the temperature, all those things weigh in on the ability for a recharger to charge your phone X amount of times. So uh, the thing is, if you have a tablet, uh, an iPad mini, uh, uh, an Acer, a Samsung uh, pad, whatever it may be, they require a lot more amperage. And a device like this doesn't have enough amps. 3,000 milliamps is not enough, not even close, to recharge any tablet. So if you're going to buy a charger and you have a tablet and you plan to charge that tablet through your charger, Again, I recommend a minimum of 10,000 milliamps because with 10,000 milliamps, you will be able to easily recharge your smartphone multiple times and charge your tablet, depending upon the size of it, two, three, four times. Again, considering those variables that are there. So uh, that said, we all know now that we want at least at least 10,000 milliamps. Now, what makes this charger different than any of the other chargers. Well, uh, the, the real key or, or, or stick to this is that uh, uh, it has a solar panel that's built on the front of this, right into it, so that uh, with the typical chargers like this, and again, these come in this format or whatever, but you're going to charge this up either typically through a power pack, a, you know, a, a cube power pack that comes with it, or you're going to charge this up through your USB port on your computer. Now, keep in mind, I don't care what kind of charger you have, what brand it is, uh, if you're going to charge these chargers up through your USB port on your computer, whether it's your desktop or your laptop, it will take longer to charge these devices up going that method opposed to using uh, this method with the power pack. Now, even with the power supplies that you get, these come in different amperages. So if you have a small charger, you're going to be getting a small uh, power pack. 
Uh, you can use any size power pack to charge these up. They won't, you won't burn them out. They don't take, if this is, uh, let's say, an amp and this only requires, you know, 20 milliamps, you're not going to burn it out. Uh, on the other hand, if this is a 10,000 milliamp charger and you're using one that doesn't produce that amount of power, it will not recharge this. Similar in fashion to what happens on your computer uh, USB ports. They're really not designed for charging. <coughs> Excuse me, if they do charge, it's going to take a lot longer time, roughly 50%. So when you buy a charger, and if the charger does come with the power pack, I recommend you use the charger that comes with the power pack because they are usually matched. That said, if you have a larger charger, a larger power pack, I would use that across the board for everything. It will charge your device faster, and uh, it just, just makes things quicker and easier to use. So that said, uh, this device charges in two ways. Uh, if you look at the, the, again, the front of it has the solar panel, which you can clearly see. And what this is used for is to collect light, primarily sunlight, and turn that into power. So by putting this in the sun, and that's probably where you would want to use this if you're laying at the beach or uh, have the, uh, the uh, uh, advantage or gift to live in Hawaii or Arizona, uh, it's always sunny, so I could just throw this on my windshield and just let it sit there all day long and charge. Uh, or I can sit on the beach and let it charge. It doesn't have to be hot sunlight. It just has to be sunlight. It doesn't have to be in direct sunlight. If it's in direct sunlight, it will charge faster. If it's in not direct sunlight, it will charge a tad slower. In any event, it will still charge at the same rate that uh, the power device will be charging at. Now, that said, uh, yes, you can charge this up in the traditional manner by using a USB cord and putting it into a charger or using the USB socket that's on your laptop. So let's take a look at the side features of this, which would be right here. And uh, if you notice, right here you have a 2-amp output. The 2-amp output obviously would be used for something that's going to take more power that requires you know, more juice to recharge it, for example, a tablet. So if I had a iPad mini, which I do, if I had a, a Samsung tablet, which I happen to own, those devices would be charged in that 2 amp output right there because they take more juice. Uh, this comes with an on and off switch, uh, and again, I'm going to, rather than show you here, which is small, we'll just take a look at the diagram. It's very simple. You turn the on and off button, on or off, and uh, these are actually lights that show the charge, if it's charged or not. Well, I don't know if you can see this. But there are now three lights out of four, which means this is 75% charged, which is fine. Now, one tip that I'm going to give you, whenever you get a brand new device, whether it's a Bluetooth device or a power charger or a microphone, whatever it may be, a headset that works on batteries, my advice is to charge that before you use it and charge it so that, in this case, all four lights light up or however many lights you have on the device, whatever it may be, that before you use it, it's fully charged. And the reason for that is with the types of batteries that they're using today, you want the battery fully charged, topped off before you use it so you don't immediately start draining the battery. And uh, there's some other things that uh, uh, are involved in the process, but we're going to let those for later. Uh, so again, charge your device fully before charge it overnight before you use it that's my recommendation so uh, again we put on the on the uh, on and off button here and it shows that there's three lights which means it's 75 percent charged that's pretty much it now over here you will see that they have a uh, one amp output and of course that will be used for smartphones if i plug my laptop on that will it charge not my laptop if i put my tablet on that will it charge yeah it will but it will take forever and it will drain this pretty quick and it's really not the best way to do it which is why you bought a 10,000 milliamp charger in the beginning so you have the ability to have that 2 amp output. Now, can you charge the smartphone and the laptop at the same time? Yes, you can. Obviously, obviously it's going to drain the power on this much quicker but uh, you, can, you can do that. Now, what's nice about this device uh, again, if you want to recharge it, here's your input, and it says 5 volts in, so it means you actually get 
with this device as you would with any device, the USB plug. And then they also give you a package of different types of jacks that will connect to whatever phone you may have. And uh, oddly enough, uh, they have the old iPhone uh, power supply uh, to charge your older iPhones. That would be the 5 and below. Actually, the 5, I think, did change the port, so it's the 4 and below. So, so there it is. Uh, that's the jack, and this actually plugs into here, which goes into the USB. So I have to use my iPhone cord because it's not supplied with this and use the USB outlets that you'll see here to charge my iPhone 6. Not a big deal. Now to charge this device up, again, you have three different ways to charge this opposed to this, which you only have two different ways. On this device, you have to either plug it into the power pack to charge it or you have to plug it into the USB port on your laptop or desktop or whatever it may be. With this device, you have three options. One would be the power supply, two would be the USB port, or three would be just put it in the sun and it will recharge the battery. So that's, that's the great advantage of having a device like this. Not only are you getting 10,000 milliamps, which is the minimum that you want, uh, but you also have three ways to charge it. So, for example, if you are on a trip, hopefully there's sunlight where you're going, again, you can throw this on the dashboard of your car and just let it sit there. Even if you're not charging up a device, this device itself is charging, and uh, you never have to worry about where you're going to get power from. So it's a good, good idea from that standpoint of view. Of course, you could plug this into your cigarette uh, lighter or if you have a USB output and plug that into there and it will charge it that way too but in a pinch uh, that's a nice thing to have and where I live in Arizona uh, it's it's a it's great functionality because again it's always sunny out here I could just let this uh, sit outside in the backyard although I have to admit when it gets to be 123 degrees in the summertime out here uh, I don't think that this would like uh, the heat of 123 degrees, it would probably burn out the solar panel in here. There's no information uh, as to the safety of that, but my, my hunch is that uh, uh, that amount of heat will fry this to a crisp uh, because the sun fries everything to a crisp out here. As a matter of fact, uh, I used to live back east in Boston, as a lot of you know, but out here I've noticed that uh, in two or three years, anything that's wood that you own pretty much dries out and just cracks. Uh, because it's so dry out here. So typically the homes here would have humidifiers where you would put a humidifier in your home to put some moisture in the air. But I've really noticed a lot of the uh, wood, uh, particularly on the beds, that just get brittle because it's so dry. Also, uh, your tires, believe it or not, on your car, you just blow through tires out here because of the intense heat and pretty much the lack of moisture in the air. So that's enough about the Arizona terrain, but I thought I would throw that in. So uh, this device does work uh, as it says it does uh, I am pretty pleased with it again you get the uh, charger uh, these come in different colors uh, this happens to be blue and uh, you also get the pins for recharging and uh, you can pick this up for uh, uh, right now on Amazon you can buy a new one for fifteen dollars and sixty cents which is a pretty good price for a ten thousand uh, milliamp uh, power supply uh, is it the best one out there? Heck no, but uh, if you want the convenience of the solar panel, it's a very good price point, and uh, I have had no, no problems. I haven't had it a long time, maybe three, or three weeks. I've used it twice. It's worked well, and I know all of you are going to want to have an answer to this question, so I'll, I'll, I'll address it right now. Can you put this under a light, and will it charge? Uh, the answer is yes, kind of, sort of. Uh, what this really wants to see is the, uh, the angstrom unit, uh, the light temperature, you will, of the sun, uh, which has a lot of power in it, uh, opposed to a, a, a regular light. Uh, light will charge this, but you're kind of back to the same mode of charging this on a USB. If I put a, a, an incandescent bulb on this or put it even really close to it, uh, it would suck the energy out of that and would, it would charge it. But it would charge it slower than if I had it on a nice sunny day facing uh, the sun. So uh, that kind of sort of answers the question. And uh, that will wrap it up today for the Gadget Professor. I apologize about the two phone calls. I'll have to see who that was and call them back. I hope everybody has a very wonderful and happy and healthy, healthy, please, uh, Christmas. 
I enjoyed bringing you today's Gadget Professor show, and I think I will see everybody maybe next year, uh, or anyway, whatever next Thursday is. So have a great day. So long from the Gadget Professor. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor.